I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the School City of Hammond, Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. Regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Can we all stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Roll call. Trustee Murphy. Present. Trustee King. We're here. Trustee Candelaria. Present. Trustee Miller. Present. And Trustee Zolno also present. All members are here. <clears throat> Number two, financial presentation. Mr. Reese. Good evening, members of the board and Mr. Miller. Tonight I have for you your May financial report. Happy report in the education fund. We're essentially on budget. We are uh, just slightly over by 182,000, but I want to point out that's less than a quarter of a percent that we're actually over budget within that fund due to the size of that fund. Um, no significant information in, in the education fund this month. In the next fund, you'll start uh, seeing we actually received an advance um, on our property taxes for the first half of this year. We received those in May. We received those anywhere between 21 to about 23% of what we're expected to receive. So think about it, if we receive half by June 30, uh, which is normally an, an average for us, uh, about a quarter of what we received, a little under a quarter uh, we received for the, uh, in May. So we expect to see a similar amount or slightly more um, come here at the end of this month. On the second page there on the referendum fund, you'll notice we have collected 21.35% of our property taxes uh, for the year uh, through May. Uh, the positive uh, about the referendum fund is the variance is positive by two, almost $2.3 million uh, within that fund. So still in good shape within the referendum operating fund. The next fund's a, a debt fund, the referendum project fund. It's also at 21.35% uh, collection rate on the property taxes. Uh, there won't be any expenditures until this month in June. We'll make uh, a payment uh, on the uh, Hammond Central bonds uh, it, on June 30th. Next fund is the debt service fund. You see a little slighter, slightly higher, 21.77%. Uh, other than that, regular payments uh, out of the debt service fund um, for common school loans. On page five is the pension debt service fund. Again, you'll see about a 21.78% uh, collection. Uh, that fund is still in the red, uh, but we won't uh, make a payment on those bonds until July. So any additional revenue we receive will hopefully get us some positive uh, for uh, June 30. <clears throat> One thing I do want to point out is this is a fund that had money loaned to it temporarily last December because it was in a negative position. I'll talk about that here in a second but that'll be reverted back to the debt service fund, about $150,000 that'll go back um, on before on June 30th. The last fund is the operation fund. Again, you'll notice this one's at 24.92%. Uh, the percentage is higher here because we've already taken out the circuit breaker loss. So we didn't actually receive quite that mu much for what we levied, uh, but a lot of the circuit breakers already taken out of that, that fund. One other item to point out is in the transportation line item uh, for the month of May, You'll notice that that's up by about a million dollars. We actually paid for the eight new buses that came in uh, the ordered last October. Those were received and paid for, or received and paid for in May. That's why you see that number jump up a bit and why our variance actually went back to almost even in that fund, um, which we'll be making money again in that fund coming next month. So with that, um, if you combine the three funds, which I talk about every month, every, every month uh, we have a positive variance in looking at that of just over $2.1 million through the month of May. So still in good, good shape for our budget as we're moving forward. If you move now to your, uh, the board summary page, uh, I mentioned briefly there that we have the temporary transfers that need to go back in, uh, in, the, in the month of June. So that'll be coming up and you'll see those come out of those respective funds, the pension debt service fund and the self-insurance fund going back to the debt service and the operations fund respectively. There on the bottom left-hand side of that report, you'll see those dollar amounts. Again, I want to make a comment regarding the self-insurance fund. 
We are st still struggling and it is a concern in that fund. Uh, our revenues, due to the increased uh, contributions by the school board, uh, our revenues are up over three quarters of a million dollars, 764,000. The big concern though is our expenses in the self-insurance fund are up $1.45 million over last year. So why we made the additional contribution to try to get us back to healthy. And at this point, we are still making money compared to the previous year. We're up about $250,000 revenues over expenditures. However, we wanted that number to be significantly more considering we finished in the, in the red on December 31 of this past year. Um, working on ways and looking at ways to uh, try to contain those costs through some plan changes potentially coming up here in the next month or two. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have at this time. Any questions? I have none. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Next on the agenda is Team Hammond Robotics presentation. Oh. Hi, April. How are you? Good. How are you today? Very good. Yeah, good evening, Superintendent Miller and the School Board of Trustees. My name is April Brown O'Brien, and I am the head coach of Team Hammond Robotics. When the pandemic hit last year in March, it was right before Team Hammond was supposed to go to our first competition. And then things started shutting down, so all of our competitions were canceled. Um, so for a long while, we didn't know what our um, competition season was going to be like. Um, until around October, we finally got a phone, uh, an email stating that we would um, still be having competition this past season, and we went virtually. Uh, so our team, of course, we, you know, we did our virtual meetings, and um, so in February, we were needing to get into the robotics room so we can um, start working at some of the, the uh, the virtual competitions that we would be doing. So with the help of with our um, safety crew, um, they designed a safety plan for us to get safely, uh, to work back into the robotics room. Um, so just to give you an idea what our season was like the, uh, just this past year, um, we had three challenges um, that we did for our competition. And um, I have three students here that are gonna talk about those uh, three uh, challenges that we had. So the first one I'm going to have is Aviana Franco. She is the head of our at home challenge and she's going to tell you what we had to do with that challenge and that's the video. <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Um, Hello, my name is Aviana Franco. I'm going to be a junior attending Morton High School. This past year was my second year on the team. I was a programmer and driver on the team, and I also worked on animation, the at-home challenge, and game design. The video is currently showing the different autonomous and teleop programs we performed at the at-home challenge. Autonomous, or auto, is controlled all by code written by our team's programmers and doesn't require much physical assistance from the humans. Teleop, on the other hand, requires human drivers to tell the robot what to do and where to go. So when you see auto on the title screen, it means the robot's being controlled only by code. And when you see teleop, it means the robot is being controlled by one or two human drivers. Usually a new challenging game is introduced every January to teams as an event called kickoff. This year was a bit different. Teams were invited to compete in a skills competition, a series of challenges for teams who had access to their robot. Our camera crew recorded clips of our robot performing these challenges and we submitted this video for judging. The barrel racing challenge was, a auto, was in audio and teleop. We had to drive around the markers as quickly as possible. The bounce challenge was also in auto and teleop. It was basically the same concept as barrel racing, but we had to come in contact with the long markers at the end. The galactic surge pass A and B were both only in auto. These challenges required us to 
collect the specifically placed power cells, otherwise known as by our team as lemons. The light speed circuit challenge required us to drive around the markers as quickly as possible as well, but this challenge was only in Teleop. As you can see, we used water bottles as some of the markers for this challenge. So it was especially <laughs> important for the human driver to avoid those markers because obviously water and parts inside of the robot such as the motors, the talons, and the Navex don't mix well. <laughs> we had to go around this path twice. Wow. The PowerPoint challenge was only in Teleop. The purpose of this challenge was to score as many points as possible in the PowerPoint's bottom port, which was worth one point, outer port, which was worth two points, and inner port, which was worth three points. We had two additional human players for this challenge, one through power cells, to the other human player who inserted them into the robot. The primary driver would need to bring the robot back to the reintroduction zone for, so the human players can insert the power cells into the robot. After the power cells were inserted, the primary driver would drive to the scoring zone against the power port, and a secondary driver would shoot the power cells into one of the ports. The interstellar Accuracy challenge was also only in Teleop. Once again, we had to score as many points as possible in the power ports ports. There are five zones to shoot from. The green zone, the yellow zone, the blue zone, the red zone, and then against the power port in that order. After completing each zone, the driver would have to drive back to the reintroduction zone so the human player can feed the robot three lemons from the loading bay. Salem was both, was both an audio, auto, and teleop. Like the barrel racing challenge and the bounce challenge, the goal was to drive around the markers as quickly as possible. Despite how challenging this school year was, we managed to work well as a team and have fun while doing it. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Very neat. Okay, and the other challenge that we had was game design. So I'm going to have Kevin Kapischke come up and talk about what we had to do for this one. How's it going? It's going all right. Good. <laughs> Don't be nervous. This is fun. Uh -huh. Love it. Love it. The game design challenge was the second of three virtual competitions where teams were tasked with designing the first game in a 27 foot by 54 foot field. There was an optional challenge to include a chain in the design, though this was not a requirement. Our design did not use this chain, but it used elements. Uh, it used elements other than the chains due to concerns about damaging the robot in any way that we thought was possible for the chain to be implemented. We had three different spherical uh, game ele elements, a ball that was similar to that found in like a ball pit. We had, and then we had two balls that were similar in shape and design, but not in size. And those are also similar to the ball in a, in a previous game called Lunacy. <clears throat> uh, the balls that were similar to the previous game were to represent oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms, depending on their size. And then the ball pit like <coughs> balls were to represent oxygen bubbles. Uh, the oxygen bubble, uh, the oxygen bubble balls were recyclable, so you could score them, and then they would be reintroduced onto the field. And then the balls for hydrogen and atom, 
or hydrogen and oxygen atoms were not recyclable, they would be scored somewhere on the field, uh, and that would be it for the rest of the game, for the match. The scoring area for the oxygen bubbles was in a corner so that they could easily be reintroduced. And it had a protected zone near it called the pit, where opposing robots would not be allowed to contact the robot that is scoring without a penalty. At the beginning of each match, robots would start at or front for a 15 second autonomous phase from near the center of the field. During the last 30 seconds of the match, the robots would be able to return to the center of the field and climb up to three feet up rope ladders. The score would increase based on how high up the ladder they would get. Thank you for your time. Very good. Thank you. So you can see that we've been really busy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this last challenge that we had, um, we had to identify a problem or an opportunity and designed a solution to help people or a community of people to keep and regain achievement um, of optimum uh, physical and or mental health and fitness through activity, play, or movement. So after many ideas and votes that the team came up with, um, we were inspired by a young woman who, who was an eighth grader at Clark, um, but she is now going to be a freshman heading to Hammond Central, and her name is Gracie Sampson. Um, she has spa spastic diplegia cerebral palsy, which causes a great tension in the muscles. Normally, muscle groups work in pairs. When one pair tightens, the opposite pair re relaxes. In, these, in this young woman, the message is interrupted between the brain, the nerves, and the muscles, and it causes movements to be difficult. So with that being said, um, Team Hammond did, did something, uh, stepped up and did something to help her. So with that being said, um, I invite Cesar Pineda to come up here to talk about our innovation project that we did for her. Good evening. Hello. My name is Cesar Panetta. I have been on the team for four years. Today I have graduated and I'm going to here to talk about what we did for Gracie in our innovation project. So basically what we did, which is hiding over in that lovely red crate over there, <laughs> is um, we actually modified her trike. Back then she used to ride a trike when she was a little kid when she had control of her legs. And to help her uh, work out her legs, we modified a trike so she'd be able to bike like she used to when she was younger. To see what modifications we made, looking right away, you can see there's the seat. Um, the seat has been changed from the usual bicycle seat, which is usually uncomfortable. Um, we basically changed it to better support, have a backing so she can lay her back on and keep her posture straight. There's also a arms thrust right there so that she can keep herself still to so help her feel secure when they're putting her on the bike. And there's also a latch on the bike at this side, the latch, yeah. Just pull that out and it actually allows us to turn the seat so that her parents or whatever she was getting on the bike can be able to easily carry her and place it on the bike. And it can be moved back in place. Yes, it can be moved back in place to the floor forward so that we can adjust her and put her feet in the pedals. You can automatically see the pedals have strapping on them so to keep her legs still and placed on the pedals so that they, so much if she's pedaling, her feet stay on the pedals. One thing you didn't mean to have noticed automatically is that another modification is with the gear system in the back of the trike. Before the trike, whenever we pushed it, the pedals wouldn't move. It was more for the idea that when you moved your pedals back, it would stop the bike. But like, now we uh, switched the gear system so that now the pedals will move when you push the bike, so that it's not her that's been doing the pedaling, it's actually someone else is pushing her and they're just making her move her leg. So yeah, that's what we did for Gracie's. This is our project that we submitted. Thank you. So 
you can see our kids did an amazing job um, to help out one of our own. Um, if the board would allow, uh, we would like to, Gracie would actually like to demonstrate on how the bike works for her. Oh, yes. Certainly. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Is <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go, Gracie.
That was our bike for Gracie. <laughs> Did you want to take a moment to introduce the other team members in the audience? Um, yes, I mean, if they uh, want to come up and introduce themselves. Dave Hammond. <clears throat> Excuse me, in April, would you like to share your uh, volunteers and with the Haven House this past? <clears throat> I'm sorry? The work you did with the Haven House. Would you like oh, to share that? Yes. <laughs> um, we actually did a, a drive for the Haven House and we collected a lot of items for um, them. We collected a lot of food and uh, different um, items that they had on their wish list. So they were very grateful that we did something like that. And we do plan on uh, when our season kicks off again in August that we will be doing an animal uh, drive to collect uh, dog food, cat food, and everything for our local uh, animal shelters as well. Thank you. But if I can get uh, the Team Hammond students to come on up here and they can introduce themselves. How long did they work on the bike? Um, Mr. Noble? Come on up. <laughs> we don't bite. Avi, Caesar, Kevin. Well, they were asking him how long we were working on the bike. Oh. So I'm not recalling. Well, should I pull it, it in? Uh, about, uh, six weeks. Oh. <laughs> trying to get a photo. It took us about six weeks. And almost one finger. <laughs> 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 we got a, a, a chance to see reality. You know. uh, somehow I got my finger in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I got my finger in the wrong place, and they got a shock. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, six weeks, design, build, alterations after alterations after trying Gracie in a, and seeing how she can adapt to the bike, too. That was the whole biggest problem was, is adapting to that point. It's the first time we ever did anything like this for the robot team in 28 years. Wow. So it's, it's a stepping stone. And as you heard from Miss April, that uh, will continue. You all yeah. did a fantastic job. I mean, that's just incredible <laughs> to help somebody out like Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss April and your entire team, it just just amazing, uh, just truly amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I mean, even though that we didn't uh, win anything for any of those challenges that we did, the most important thing is that we we made a difference in a young girl's life, and yeah. she can go outside and ride a bike. Absolutely. Right. So, but I'll let I'll let you. I'll let the team introduce themselves, and I have two seniors that um, I'll be recognizing tonight as well. Real quick, then I'll be done. <laughs> Very good. Hello, my name is Eden O'Rourke. I've been on the team for three years now, and I'm about to go to the new school, Hammond Central. I've been at Hammond High for about three years. I'm going to miss it. Hello, my name is Jay Morales. This was my second year on the team. I'm going to be a junior, and I'm also attending Hammond Central. Uh, my name is Ulysses Pineda. I am a, uh, I'm 15 years old. This is my first year on my team. Uh, I, my home school is Forest Park. I went to the ACC, and I'm going to go to Hammond Central. Hello again. Um, my name is Aviana Franco. Uh, this is this was my second year on the team. I'm 
going to, I was from the ACCU, but I'm going to attend Morton. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hello. My name is uh, Walter Gaitan. Uh, this is my first year on the team, and I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I went to ACCU also, and I will be going to Heaven Central. Wow. And then these are two seniors that just graduated. It's Kevin Kapischke and Cesar Panetta. My name is Kevin Kapischke. This was my fourth year on the team. I just graduated from Gabbett High School. What's your plans? I plan to attend Purdue Northwest and study computer science. Right on. Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Cesar Panetta. I have been in the team for four years. I say throughout my years, I have been the safety captain, the film crew captain, and I also helped a lot in scouting and stuff like that as well. Um, after I graduate, I'm actually currently enrolled in IU Bloomington, and I will be majoring in psychology. Nice. We obviously couldn't do this without our uh, fabulous mentors that actually stuck around for this season. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. <laughs> My name is Brian Kapischke. I'm a former student on Team Hammond. Um, I was a junior mentor for two years after I graduated. Now I'm a full-time mentor because I'm old enough now. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be a senior in college come fall semester, and I am majoring in computer science. At PNW. My name is Jan Kapischke. I've been a mentor for three years, a parent for six. Um, Kevin and Brian are my sons who have now both graduated from the team. Um, and so I help a lot with uh, the stuff that goes behind the scenes. Scouting sometimes, but mostly the essays that they have to write to submit for various awards. Very good. Thank you. We appreciate your time and thank you for letting us share this wonderful bicycle and everything. <laughs> April, real quick, if, yes. uh, if a parent is watching this and they would like to, you know, have more information, how can they find out more about Team Hammond Robotics? Um, and they can uh, actually email me, which is, my email is adobrien at hammond.k12.in.us. Um, we do have a Facebook page, and we also do have um, our own website. All they have to do is just uh, Google Team Hammond 71. Okay. And we will be um, <clears throat> at Ham Hammond Central's orientation for those uh, four dates uh, in July. So um, if there's any students out there that would want to join our team, we're recruiting. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about one more round of applause? Thank you very much. That brings us to item number C, Summer Meal Kickoff Event Review. I'd like to call uh, our Food and Nutrition Director, Christine Clarehan. Good evening, President Zolno, Superintendent Miller, School Board Trustees. Thank you for having me here tonight. Um, we're just going to do a real quick recap of our summer meal kickoff event. It was our first time ever doing it. So we have a short one minute and 20 second video to kick it off. To continue it because it's so popular. Summer Meals Kickoff Event. So they're, again, free meals for anyone 18 and under. You can see our smoothie bike over there.
We are still out at our summer kickoff event. Superintendent Miller is up in the dunk tank. Quite a line to dunk Mr. Miller. <laughs> So to say that it was a success would be an understatement. Um, we had no idea how many people to expect, and then it um, <laughs> it rained on top of it. So um, also just want to run through a couple of thank yous. Um, we put the event together in less than 10 days. It was an idea that we had, and we just kind of threw a bunch of Hail Mary passes, and it worked out. Um, Biggest thank you to Tina Callahan and her team at Edison. Um, those 663 outside meals didn't count the in, like summer school session kiddos. They ended up doing a little over 800 um, kids service that day. And they get two breakfasts and two lunch per, um, like every Monday. So that was, you know, well over 2,000 meals that they prepared um, that day. Because that was, you know, the first Monday right after school had ended. Lynn Sterl, the assistant director, coordinated all the food. There was, um, it was almost like a mock uh, farmer's like produce stand, which was fun to see the kids actually get to touch the fresh fruit and experience it themselves um, in its whole form. Again, Teresa Mintz, the community wellness coordinator for Lake County from Purdue Extension and her intern Gabriella were so helpful. The custodians, it felt like they had to break down thousands of boxes because it was a couple if not more, $1,000 worth of fresh produce. So every box had to be broken down. Um, the Teamsters, despite the fact that they're doing a 1,000 different things right now, were able to pick up the tents, which helped because, again, it was raining, and return them. The carpenters assembled them. Field Services was out there helping. IT provided additional Wi-Fi strength that was needed. Because um, one of the big um, gets that I thought we had, besides the Indiana, Indiana Department of Health, was those who have been getting the PEBT, that um, pandemic, basically food stamps, um, they had a table there to answer people's questions, um, which is great because it is a confusing thing when the, they want to call us and we don't have answers, so it was nice to have them there. The National Guard was a surprise, but so helpful. Hammond PD had a presence there, principal use, um, or Yo's having, allowing us to use Edison, and again, on the first day of summer school, um, through all the chaos, she was wonderful. David Fazzini, the assistant principal at Morton High School, or Morton Elementary School, helped with the dunk tank. Um, and then a final thank you to Superintendent Miller. He was in the dunk tank 90, maybe that's why you're sick, um, 90 minutes. Um, in freezing cold, it was hose water. So it was not warm water. That was 90 minutes of frigid cold water. Um, but he was such a good sport. Um, we have some like internal Facebook groups across the country just for food service directors, so we were able to brag about having that kind of support, which I think is um, very telling of the district that we have. So, um, and I put a bunch of flyers. We still have a lot of flyers. Um, it was nice to know that we brought attention to our summer meals program, which again, anyone can eat. Uh, doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter what state you're from. We're federally funded, not state funded. Um, we do meals, grab and go Mondays and Wednesdays. You don't have to have your kids with you, just their name, their school name, and the grade that they uh, just finished. So um, we have that at seven schools across the district. And I know I ran away from questions the last time I was here, so I wasn't sure if you guys have any for me before I head back tonight. Just a comment. I, I've learned uh, that if you are told there are three other people who want to go in the dunk tank, with you, you let them go first. <laughs> well, at least you were wet before the rain came, so yeah. you're all set. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Great job. Just a Absolutely. A big thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have an, an incredible team that really makes the impossible yes. happen. So, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, a wonderful experience, but we're excited for things to hopefully go back to normal soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That takes, him not, takes us to item three, public expression first period. Public expression first period limited to items on the agenda. First community member is going to be Ella Anderson, Melanie Richardson.
Good evening, um, Superintendent Miller, Board of Trustees. I'm, my name is Ella Anderson. I'm Melanie Richardson. Um, I'm an employee, School City of Hammond, Transportation Department. I've been an employee for 28 years. I've been an employee for 34 years at Transportation Department. I am a bus driver, and Melanie is a monitor. Also a bus monitor. We're here to speak on the COVID stipend. Um, to our understanding, um, the Transportation Department will be receiving a $1,500 stipend. Um, however, we feel like it's a little unfair that we're only receiving $1,500 when the teachers are receiving $3,000 or have received $3,000 because we were hands-on with these students through the 2021 school year. Teachers had an option to come in or stay or teach from home. We didn't have that option. We were in harm's way during this whole pandemic thing, which we didn't have a problem with. We came to work and we came and we did our job. And I just feel like our department is being looked over as far as us being out there working with these students hands on. And we were definitely hands on with these students. A lot of these students um, end up getting COVID. Uh, quite a few of our employees end up getting COVID. Not saying they got the COVID from the students, but we were right there working with these students. A lot of them on the bus had COVID. Some of them we were aware of, some of them we weren't. So I just feel like it's a little unfair for the teachers to get 3,000 and we only get 1,500 when we were there. We were there working with these students. And the monitor position is we hook the kids up, we're in their face all the time, and um, we put the seatbelts on them and we monitor the kids and, and both of us do that. But um, we sometimes have to sit with the kids and our life was, you know, just as important as the teachers was. So we figured that that was wrong, you know, how we was only getting $1,500. So, you know, can y'all look over, look and see if we can get a little more than $1,500? And we're speaking on all the transportation department, yes. not just me and her. Yes, we're speaking for the entire transportation department. Um, if not, because I know whatever teachers get, we normally get as far as raises anyway. The teachers are dealt with first, then transportation department. If not the 3000 can you at least give us enough so that we will end up with a $1,500 stipend once they tax it? Can you, can you do that? I just feel like, you know, we deserve a little bit more. You know, because I, I just feel like we deserve a little bit more consideration because we were there. We were there. We didn't have the option to stay home. We had to come in and transport these students. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next community member is going to be Lou Geekus. Good evening, Mr. President, trustees, Mr. Miller. I'm, my name is Lou Gigas. Uh, you can find me at 5930 Holman Avenue. I'm here on behalf of the Hammond Teachers Federation to respectfully request that the extended elementary day uh, that you're going to be asked to take action tonight be postponed for further discussion with the Hammond Teachers Federation and also to um, uh, set aside a portion of the personnel report that addresses the split teacher assignment. That is contrary to our previous agreement as to how that was supposed to happen. So um, we appreciate your consideration of that. Thank you. Thank you. Next community member is going to be Diana Gilbert. <clears throat> Hello, I just wish those students would not have left because I really wanted to say they were on the agenda and that the Hammond Robotics team has done a phenomenal job since 1991 when they were even beating the big boys of Dahmer Chrysler and Rolls Royce. Kudos to those children and to the teams and to the, the school system that has supported them. I just wish they were here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah. Next community, community member is going to be Nancy Cobb. Hi, my name is Nancy Cobb, and I'm a member of this community. I live at 834 Highland Street, Hammond, Indiana. And when I signed up, I forgot it was limited to the items on the agenda. But I like to say, since I am up here, I do appreciate and I am very thankful for the robotics, the Hammond Robotics presentation, because it was a great presentation. And the lady, I think her name was April, she's doing a fantastic job with the children as well as uh, when they made the bike for Grace. So um, that's the first thing I wanted to say. And the, the summer meal kickoff event, I like to say that I'm glad that it's for anyone. At, and you can go to any school, 18 and under. And I think that is a good program for the communities, not just one community, not just Clark community, not just a Hammond High, well, Hammond Central community, but all the communities. So thank you. Thank you. Now I will pass it on to Superintendent Miller to see if we have any online questions. There is none. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Moving on with the agenda. Next, we have the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to accept all consent agenda items? Mr. President. Trustee Miller. I make a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Discussion. Trustee King. Thank you. Mr. President, I would like to read into record the accounts payable docket register for June 15, 2021. The claims totaled $1,623,876.53. A payroll totaled $3,096,110.70, Mr. President. In addition, uh, in regards to the uh, personnel report and uh, payroll, I did have some questions that were not answered. So I would hope that my questions will be answered and put on, on uh, next week as old business uh, because these questions were brought to my attention by our stakeholders and it should, they should be addressed publicly and not sending me an email the next day. Is that okay? Thank you, Trustee King. Are, uh, just for clarity's sake, you mean you're gonna send me, send me these questions and then then you want them addressed at the next meeting? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting, yes, yes, Mr. Miller. <clears throat> when, when I specifically send you emails or questions regarding the consent agenda and don't get an answer, <clears throat> and then sometimes the next day I'll get an answer, but it doesn't serve the public. So I'm asking that <clears throat> when that happens, is it possible to put it under old business so it can be discussed publicly? That's my concern. Uh, stakeholders brought these questions to my attention and that's why the stakeholders should be able to hear them at a public meeting. Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. Um, I'd like to know what did not, I see you sent an email out at three o'clock with a question, but I don't see anything else that wasn't answered. I mean, do we really need to say someone's salary at the next board meeting? I mean, that was one of the questions and I had did ask that of another person. Um, so, but that is not something we normally put out in public as having it expressed verbally. Well, that's your prerogatives, Trustee Murphy. I am a transparent trustee and uh, that's how I choose it to be uh, done. Now, if you, I'm, you know, I'm about transparency. If you're not, that's you. 
But, you know, time and time again, I raise questions. I don't get an answer. And uh, it's just disrespectful. So some kind of way I got to get an answer in a timely manner. And uh, so the stakeholders can see that I am asking the questions and I'm not ignoring them. Mr. President? Trustee Miller. I concur with Trustee Murphy. I mean, I see comments, but I'm not really seeing questions other than something that was sent at 320 today, which really didn't give much time for the superintendent to respond or gather that information. Thank you. Let's get back to the point of consent agenda. Well, what was my answer? <laughs> Are you going to give me an answer? I think at this point in the agenda is I was asked, discussion on the motion, and so it's discussion on the motion. And that is my question under the motion. That's my question under the motion, and I'm asking for an answer. I don't know what the question is. Yeah, I really well, don't you, you, that's not unusual. I, think the I, I regularly answer emails from all the trustees. I do. I know the, the last, the one you have outstanding in, in my checklist is the, the CARES funding. Ms. Danko sent me a draft today. Um, I should have that in your hands tomorrow. But other than that, I don't think there's anything else outstanding. So the answer is no, for the record. I'm not answering yes or no to anything. I'm, I'm just, you, you made a claim well, that I don't a, answer I mean, email. So my I question is just email. hanging out there in thin air. My concern is just hanging out there in thin air. Which, which concern specifically? Maybe that would be helpful. I have expressed it, and I don't think I need to repeat myself. I mean, we're all professional people up here. We can understand. We're coherent. Okay, we're going back. There's a, been a motion to approve the consent agenda. There's been a second. We've had discussion. Calling for the vote. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee King. No. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Zolno, yes. Four, yes, one, no. Motion passes. Item number six, renaming of the Morton High School Auditorium. Trustees, for your consideration, I'd like to call up Diana Gilbert from the Gavitt High School Alumni Committee um, to discuss this proposition. Thank you, trustees, for even considering it. I am um, I graduated from Gavitt in 1973. I was on the alumni committee. We realized we made a very <coughs> difficult decision to close Gavitt, but you, we haven't stopped anything else. You've kept the spirit up. The town has kept the spirit up. The alumni committee had a wonderful event uh, last Saturday. We have brochures. If any of them would you like to see the wonderful 60-year history? We are excited that they are going to consider moving some of the memorabilia from Gavitt to, uh, to Morton. And we are excited. We Thanks. think this is just another new open door for us. Uh, Donald E. Gavitt, the name of that school was named after administrator. He had a vision. His vision was met. Uh, it is such a rich history from Gavitt, and we are so excited at just even being able to ask, <coughs> could the auditorium at Donald at, uh, be named Donald E. Gavitt at Morton because it currently does not have a name? And our memorabilia that is going to be moved there will then have a wonderful place for uh, correlation of this is the memory since the students of Gavitt, we even just heard one here, uh, we'll be going to Morton, and we just think it's a wonderful neighborhood. And that's really what the Woodmar neighborhood was from. <coughs> when I went to Gavitt, two blocks away, they went to Morton. So it was just an interesting uh, dynamic. So we really hope that you will consider naming the auditorium at Morton, Donald E. Gavitt Auditorium. Trustees, I can confirm that it really does not have a name. It's... Um, called the HAPA Auditorium because that's where HAPA is, but that's not, there's no official name that I can, I can tell at this point. That's, that's our research as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do I have a motion to approve the renaming of Morton High School Auditorium? President Zuno. Trustee King. I make a motion. I gladly make a motion of the renaming of Morton High School Auditorium to Donald G. Gavitt. Is that? To Donald G. Gavitt. Second. So, we have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Discussion. Trustee Murphy. There were three surveys to try to rename Morton High School. So when I'm not understanding the logic of just having a community member come here, make a presentation and able to rename something in another school. So we do all these surveys, we get input from the community. And under this logic, we should be renaming the auditorium at the new high school Clark. Because we're just saying that we should be change this over here because the majority of the students. So logically, we should name the auditorium Clark over at the new high school. In the past, we don't have a policy. And this is another reason I'm going to ask trustees to vote this down. We have no policy on naming um, schools, auditoriums. We should actually take some time to reflect on the type of policy we want to do. I bring up Hess on several occasions on naming. So back when there was Orchard Drive in Caldwell, the um, actual communities there, they got together and they asked the students, so what is it about our area that you think is important in renaming the school? And the community and the students just said, you know what, let's name it after one of the first settlers of the area. And they named it Hess Elementary and they went on to do with the other things. But it was these ideas and they went back to the students and they finally consolidated on that one. The other thing, um, while well, I was talking to another community member today and they said, why aren't we doing more with outreach to get naming from the community? And he brought up Irv Cross, a Hammond High graduate, football player, sportscaster. And it's like, if you're just going to name something after a business manager of the school city of Hammond, then why don't we look at it, someone from Hammond that on, went on to do great things, to do things like that. So I think a lot more discussion needs to be had on this, reflection versus just coming in here. We've had no input from the community on this whatsoever. And to remind one last time, we did three surveys of the community with thousands of responses just to decide whether or not to rename Morton High School and then end up getting with Hammond Central. So I urge my fellow board members to not vote yes on this, to table it until we get more information. Thank you. President Zuno. Trustee King. Thank you. <clears throat> my question to you is Trustee Murphy, where were you when we were doing all of this? That was my whole point during the whole scenario of, of renaming the new high school because it is board policy. And the only reason I'm supporting it because it is a board policy. And I kept saying time and time again, the board policy states that the community within that, the, the school within that community has the right to name that and we took it to another level. So uh, your concept today, I don't recall you making any of those um, concerns when we were naming the high school and agreeing uh, with me time and time again until, you know, we were just saddled with this survey company out of Colorado who, why would somebody that from Colorado come to an urban community and rename a school is beyond me, but it has happened. But board policy allows us to do this, but we didn't follow it then, but we're gonna follow it now, so. I, I can read the policy on the record if you want to yeah, I was just going to point out in, as a point of reference to uh, Trustee Murphy that you do have policy number 7000. It's called Commemoration of School Facilities. And in that, it says that from time to time, the school board may wish to commemorate a school or a school city facility, gymnasium, swimming pool, athletic field, et cetera, by means of a plaque by naming the facility after a person or some other honor 
Such commemoration should be reserved only for those individuals who have made a significant contribution to the enhancement of education generally, or the school city in particular, or to the well-being of the school city community, nation, or state. Consideration will be given to community suggestions in the naming of a, any school or other facility of the school city with appropriate citizen input obtained from the school community. The board, of, the board of school trustees shall approve a school or name facility name or change a name only after the board has considered it at a, at a previous meeting. So are you saying it needs to have two readings then? Yeah, that, would, that was the way I would read that it would need to have two readings. Thank you. But you did interpret it that way when it came to the new school. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. The parliamentarian has ruled that this item should go on to the next agenda for final approval. I don't disagree. Any other trustees have anything on this? Uh, Superintendent Miller? Mm -hmm. Trustee Miller? Um, wondering, I, I, I believe I've, I've heard some conversation by other uh, community members. Like, there, there has been some discussion about this. Has there not? Has there? We, we didn't put it out as a survey well, to the no, entire. I know, no, not as a survey, but that the teams that are working to, um, on the merger, like between the schools, that, that was like a recommendation that was coming from there, was it? It was it, was, not? it was not. It came from the Gavitt Alumni Committee. Okay. As I would, Trustee Miller, as I would read this, it, you know, it would suggest that you've got it on your agenda, and to the extent that you had it on the agenda at the last meeting, that it gives somewhat fair notice that, to your community that, hey, you know, this is going to come up so that people would have some opportunity to have some input in that before it was actually voted on. Um, you know, I, I don't recall that this was necessarily on your last agenda. It was not. Okay. Right. So, you know, I think it's just kind of, you know, it, it, it's not a very formal process, but it's somewhat informal, and it just kind of in a very informal way suggests that, you know, consideration be given to community suggestions in the naming and you can approve that only after the board has considered it at a previous meeting. So it, it does kind of give somewhat, it's sort of like what you do with your board policies. You have it out there on your agenda twice before you actually approve it. It's with the first reading and the second reading, even though it doesn't kind of read very particularly that way. Um, you know, there, there could be good reason to kind of look more closely at this to kind of take any ambiguities out of it as well, if that's what the board desired. Yeah, I mean, that at, right. least, at least it gets out into the public, then it can be reviewed in a rebuttal for the next meeting before a vote could happen. President Zuno. Trustee King. We should be reminded that prior to naming the new school, folks from Morton came to us to rename the uh, football field. And it went one meeting, one letter, it was done. And that's, that was the president that said prior to coming to name, renaming the school. So I don't know what the delay is all about. It's board policy. It was followed for the Morton um, football field. It wasn't followed for the new school. And now we're going to follow it for this. So there you have it in a nutshell. All right, so we should just put it on the agenda for the next meeting then. So what happens to the motion? The mo we got a motion in a second. <clears throat> the, um, Anna, can you remind me of the motion is specifically? I would have to withdraw it. Yeah. And I won't. Then you'd have to go ahead. What's it, Nana, the specific motion is? Motion to approve the renaming of Morton High School Auditorium. And then there's a second, and then... Ms. Murphy asked that it be withdrawn, and the person who made the motion has, has said that they're not going to withdraw the motion, so now you get to vote on it. Right. Okay. Voting on the motion. Start with Trustee Miller. Um, based on board policy, I, I, I vote no. What did she? I didn't hear it. I said based on board policy. 
But while I support the motion, but based on board policy, I vote no. Trustee Candelaria. No. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Murphy. No. And Trustee Zolno, no. One yes, four no. Motion fails. Boy, boy, we're not the most dysfunctional board. Ooh. Now, because it was voted on, I can still bring it back in, in two weeks, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. Should, right. You should yes. go ahead because it's kind of according to your policy and having Miss Murphy um, having raised this to the forefront through discussion is actually calling the board to its own policies and saying, let's be reminded about our policies. Um, and so your policy does state that having considered it and you guys have considered it and there's been some discussion about it. Um, and then you'll people kind of know that it's going it was on your today's agenda and then it would be carried over to the next agenda and then would therefore be consistent mm -hmm. with your policies correct we're just not consistent that's the bottom line it changes with the wind okay moving on next item is the approval of COVID-19 stipend resolutions Trustees, um, it was presented in executive session, uh, the rationale for the COVID-19 stipend resolutions as presented. President Zuno. Trustee King. Are we voting on both of them at the same time or separately? You have two separate ones, or do we? I believe it's when, both at the same time. When we've done resolutions in the past, like for bargaining unit things, we've combined them all into, into one. We neither one of them have a, a, a number. I mean, are we voting on both? Are we voting on the ones for the teachers, which I thought we've already voted on? The, that the teachers we already voted on. Okay, so we're just voting on this. Mr. President. Trustee King. I make a motion that we amend the uh, resolution in front of us regarding COVID to state that these employees will receive $3,000 <clears> as the teachers did based on the fact that um, I consider these folks are essential frontline workers. Um, they didn't have the option to stay at home. They had to come to work if they wanted to get paid. Um, by doing this, it just widens the gap of the half and have nots. Um, protocol has been whatever a teacher has received, the rest of the uh, employees would receive it so we're not following that these are federal dollars and it was based on uh, poverty and and how much money do we have in this pot to work with mr. Miller in the answer to we have approximately 18 million dollars 18 million dollars is that the second pot of money or the first it is correct the second the second pot eight so we're dealing with 18 million dollars so again i move that we amend this um resolution to include three thousand dollars the same as the teachers receive many of them were exposed to COVID. i have the data our own data that was provided to us i believe over 100 and something cases point of order of mr president Trustee Murphy. We, we have a motion on the floor. We need a second before further discussion. I'm not finished with explaining why I'm making the motion and I have that option. Again, it's a motion on the floor. It needs a second. I'm making the motion. Yes. No one seconded. You haven't allowed me the you, opportunity. I am making the motion and I'm explaining as to why I'm making the motion. Then do we have a second on the amended motion? A second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. Uh, before making this motion, I'd like clarity from the parliamentarians. We have two resolutions here. Um, is it okay to make one motion to approve them? Or should we approve each resolution separately? That was my original question. <laughs> I think you need to approve each resolution separately. 
What I, 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 when I raised that question, Mr. Miller, you said it was one resolution. Well, it, in the, we've done it before I mean, where we've done it all. Just back in December when we approved the collective bargaining units, we improved the the entirety of all of them with one motion. So. You know, why do, when I ask a question, I never get the right answer? Certain board members can ask, ask the same question and get a different answer, and that's the answer we go with. I mean, Attorney Conrad, you're, you're just not helping us at all. I, I, I think that in light of the discussion that you have and to ensure clarity, particularly if, you th if there is not going to be consensus amongst the board, I think it's important to allow board members to be able to express where they may or may not dissent on particular items and to have that clarity on decisions, then you need to separate the motions. Superintendent Miller, just a little bit more clarity because on where I was going with this, it's called stipend for extra duties during COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, so one of them is for administrators and psychologists. Yes. The other one is for a different class. So. I want to make sure I distinguish them properly between the two. So would it be okay to say stipend for extra duties during the COVID-19 <sighs> pandemic for administrators and psychologists? Is that clarity enough? I think that is clear enough. And the other one, I think you could simply say for classified employees. Would Thank you. Fit everyone else. All right. Mr. President, I move <clears throat> that we approve the stipend for extra duties during COVID-19 pandemic for administrators and psychologists as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Discussion. Trustee King. <clears throat> administrators meaning, my, my question and discussion, administrators meaning who? At 41 Williams, are administrators at 41 Williams is receiving a $3,000 stipend? It, it would in be. In addition to the teachers? It would be all, all employees who are on an administrative contract. So are you all, kidding all me? The, why would I kid you? They've, I mean, that was never. My understanding was this was strictly, thank you, Cindy, for catching that, because I did not catch that. Uh, the $3,000 in front of us, which we've already voted for the teachers to receive the $3,000. And this is an additional one they, that is including. They're not, a, they're not part of, administrators are not part of the teachers right. group, so they did but, not receive But you've any. thrown them in this resolution. So they're going to receive $3,000, and our staff, our support staff is going to receive less. Is that what I'm hearing? Out of $18 million, that's the best we can do? That's how we value our support staff? Really? We, <laughs> I'm not sure this is a great place to have this conversation, but if you well, look at what when, other when are we gonna have did, it? they gave zero to When are we going to have it, Mr. Drivers. Miller? They gave zero to bus drivers, and we gave 1500 Oh, this is disgusting. It's not disgusting. We've gone above and beyond I, If I say it's else. disgusting, it is disgusting. It, you don't put words in my mouth, Mr. Miller. If that's how I feel, don't sit here and say it is not. You well, don't have that prerogative. I can tell you that we paid our, 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 our support staff same or more than teachers got in other school corporations. So, so they have. Yeah, if you look at what teachers got in other school corporations, they typically got 1000 to 1500 That's true. In a lot of other school, t school systems, they didn't give their support staff an extra a dime. And so I, I do feel we've gone above and beyond compared to what a lot of our neighbors have done. But if I recall, we were stuck at 1500 for the teachers. And I be believe after what I'm going to call stipend gate, that's when uh, it went up. It was a result of, of formal negotiations with Mr. Geekus. He can vouch for it. We went back and forth and we settled at 3000 that's all it was. The teachers, in my opinion, had the biggest ask outside of the work hours. We gave hazard pay to people who had to work during the, during the time when they had to work with students. And Not all. That was worked. determined by according to the letter I, re I requested was according to the size of the building. Only would the maintenance crew get that that other portion of money the, you're talking the, about. The so if, some, so if one school is smaller the than the other, the janitors didn't get it. And, and I, my point was, how, what sense does that make? COVID is COVID. You don't need an, a, a size of a building could get, be exposed to COVID. This rationale of how we, how you all determine uh, this uh, It was simply if they worked ridiculous. with students hands-on. $18 million. That was it. That was simply the rationale. <laughs> if you worked with well, students hands-on, you got It's the not classes. equitable. That word equity that we keep throwing around. President Zilno. Trustee Miller. I, I call for the vote. 
So you've I'm sure called you for do. the vote. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. No. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. And Trustee Zolno, yes. Four yes, one no. Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. I move that we approve the resolution for the stipend for extra duties during COVID-19 pandemic. Give me a minute here. <laughs> for each classified employee covered by a collective bargaining agreement or employee handbook that worked 120 days or more during the 2020-21 school year as presented. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Discussion on the record. Trustee King. <clears throat> Obviously, we don't value our support staff. It's like we're pitting personnel against other personnel. And it, it's so unfortunate when we can so easily use the word equity, but we never really apply it. It's just a buzzword now when we're talking about equity for our employees and our essential workers. And to think that those folks were even exposed to COVID, came down with COVID, and we don't, we'll never know if they'll ever have any lingering effects from COVID, but this is how we treat our support staff. I think it's, it's, it's just unconscionable that uh, in, this, in today's society, in a city, as you, whether you know it or not, Hammond is among uh, the several cities in this country that is considered disadvantaged. And it will continue to be disadvantaged if we continue to wedge this gap between the have and have nots. And, it, and it's, it's crazy, Mr. Miller. I'll go as far as say you were comfortable asking the stakeholders to give you a $20,000 raise, pay for Mr. your superintendent's life, Mr. And, President, that, and then we can't even I call point, Miller. I call point of order. I'm sorry, get I, I call point of order. Point of order. I call point oh, of order. Day. Any other discussion from any other trustees? <coughs> None. If that vote, Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. No. Trustee Zolno. Yes. Passes four one. Okay. Next on the agenda. Next on the agenda, we have the approval of a memorandum of understanding between the School City of Hammond and the Hammond Public Library. I see Director Greenleaf in the audience. Uh, welcome. Uh, Ken Benich for the School City side has been uh, pushing this project forward, so happy to report that we're here. Good evening, trustees. Hi. We presented at our April meeting that we have been working with the Hammond Public Library and Director Greenleaf to get a partnership between the School City of Hammond and the Hammond Public Library. <coughs> Um, that memorandum of understanding is complete, and uh, we'd like you to uh, approve that tonight. This will allow all of our students to get a card from the Hammond Public Library and allow us to use all of the resources that they have. Um, we'll work uh, with them to uh, maybe even deliver books to our schools for our students that can't make it to the Hammond Public Library. So uh, it's a great partnership. We are working together on all their resources and that there are things that we don't have currently, uh, especially a lot of their electronic resources. So we ask that you approve that tonight. Thank you. Mr. President. Trustee Miller. Um, I make a motion for the approval of the MOU between the School City of Hammond and the Hammond Public Library. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Discussion. Trustee Murphy. Murphy, sorry. I, I just can't say how happy I am over this MOU. The, the partnership we're going to have next year with the Hammond Public Library is absolutely phenomenal. I just can't wait for our students all to get library cards. Thank you. President Juno. Trustee King. Thank you. Um, finally, I know Mrs. Greenlee is excited that we're finally <clears throat> apparently going to approve this MOU uh, as a member of the Hammond Board Library. And when you initially made this presentation last year, I pushed extremely hard. I don't know why it's taken so long for us to get to this point, but uh, I'm, I'm glad that I pushed the board into this collaboration. And I, I hope it is what all these children need 
in terms of technical advice when it comes to, I believe, SAT tests or, you know, the particular college exam readiness that you all have to offer our children. And uh, I applaud the Hammond Public Library for uh, stepping up and, and helping us with this. Thank you so very much, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion, we have a second, we've had discussion. Roll call vote. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. And Trustee Zolnell is yes. Five, four, zero against. Next agenda item. Approval of the revision to administrator's handbook summer school compensation. Trustees, I am recommending the language um, presented for an updated summer school administrator's pay, essentially, um, from years past, summer school was a half-day program. Now um, we're asking administrators to cover an eight-and-a-half-hour full day. And uh, they, off contract, they should be paid their, uh, their daily wage and not two-thirds two of their pay because they're not working a shortened day. The other part of it is a $750 um, amount extra duty for those administrators who had to plan for summer school in their buildings. Those are the two changes. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the revision? Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. I move that we approve the revision to Administrator Handbook Summer School Compensation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Discussion. I'm confused now. Trustee King. Are principals considered administrators? They are. So the, the resolution we just passed are they already getting $3,000? They will, yes. <laughs> Could you, um, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you. Any other discussion? If not, roll call vote. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee King? No. Trustee Candelaria? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Zolno, yes. Motion passes 4-1. Next on the agenda, elementary school hours for the 2021-2022 school year. Trustees, I'd like to call up our elementary director, Tony Salinas, for a brief presentation on why we are recommending a 30-minute increase to the elementary day, uh, 15 minutes on both sides of the day from what is currently 9 to 9.15 to 3.15 to 9 to 3.30. Mr. Salinas. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, good evening. President Zonal, trustees, um, is the presentation to be? The... Uh, first and foremost, I do want to congratulate the class of 2021 on behalf of the elementary principals and staff. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of all of the secondary administrators, teachers, principals, especially my colleague, Dr. Yanders, on uh, what she went through with her staff to get this class graduated. And <laughs> you guys went through a lot. You guys went through a lot. But I do want to say that as my elementary colleagues in the room would attest, these kids were once uh, our elementary kids, and just because they're in the secondary schools does not mean that we're any less proud of them. We're very, very happy that they were able to cross that stage. So congratulations to all our uh, graduates this year, uh, definitely. Okay, let's see, how's this gonna work? I don't think, that, I don't think this is... No. It may be because it's a PDF, Anna. It's... I'm sorry? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my talking points are basically um, understanding that our post-pandemic challenge as educators, we have two types of student growth that we have to make. We only have to make annual expected growth, 
we also have to make catch-up growth. And intervention does not always mean remediation. Intervention uh, can go both ways. And what we need is time and targeted interventions for all students. This is not just something that we're going to be focusing on kids who are struggling. We're working across the board with all students. But we are going to be in, uh, in a situation where we are expected to make, again, expected growth annually and also our catch-up growth that we have to, to make as well. Uh, again, Superintendent Miller has talked about our current bell schedule, which is 915 to 315. We're uh, proposing that our new bell schedule is 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., which means an additional 30 minutes of instructional time. Here's some of the potential benefits, and I won't read them all to you, but you'll see a lot of uh, what can be going on uh, with an extended school day. One of the things that I do want to highlight is that we would have longer instructional blocks, and within those instructional blocks, we can focus on things such as phonemic awareness, math fluency, additional uh, SEL time. As a district, we have identified uh, social emotional learning as a priority for all students. Um, we definitely would be per, um, focusing on our high ability students, our English language learners, especially our special education students. And in the elementary schools next year, we are going to be incorporating Project Lead the Way, which will be something added to our current schedule as well. Here are a few uh, additional uh, benefits of our extended day as well. Opportunities for intervention, opportunities for increased tier one instruction, and also uh, differentiated instruction based on our um, assessments. I wanted to also highlight that we have several high ability students in our district, we do, but we also have high, achieve, high achieving students. There is a clear difference. A high achiever does not make a high ability student. High achieving students tend to do well. They tend to please teachers and their parents. They, they're, they're good with time management. An actual high ability student may be identified as a high ability kid, but not have the traits of a high achieving student. All the time, we think that those kids are, 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 are not being challenged. A lot of times, those kids are not meeting grade level standards. Those kids also need intervention. That is why I don't want anyone to think about this as remediation. It's, it's uh, intervention for kids based on what they need. So again, a high achiever and a high ability student are, are very much uh, two different types of students. I'm very proud to announce that we are also going to be incorporating a phonemic awareness program across the district for our 2021-2022 school year. Phonemic awareness, for those of you who don't know, is basically just the understanding of spoken language as it relates to sounds. And in phonemic awareness, there's a phonics <coughs> component, accuracy, fluency, and comprehension. Those of us that are blessed to be able to read and write take these things for granted. We do it every day without even thinking. We know how to decode. We know how to be fluent. We know how to comprehend. Several of our students struggle with this. And if I'm being honest, we have students at the middle schools who are struggling with this, Dr. Andrews as well. So we're definitely looking at uh, incorporating that into our day as well. One of the things that we have to have, uh, trustees, is something that we call brain breaks. If we keep the day with just learning and learning and learning and talking and the kids absorbing without giving them what we call brain breaks, the kids are not going to absorb what we need. In order to have brain breaks, in order to have the brain absorb what we uh, are teaching, the kids have to have a time to be able to absorb what it is that we're uh, teaching. And brain breaks may be in the form of movement, may be in the form of songs, may be in the form of dance, but the brain actually needs a break from anything that is trying to be inputted into the, uh, the brain. And with a brain break means we need more time. Here's a sample daily schedule. This is not an exhaustive schedule, and I'm not saying that all schools will look this way. This is just an example of what a, a schedule could potentially look like. Uh, we do have breakfast that's gonna be taking place in the classroom, SEL morning meeting, and also routines. Our kids are going to need a lot of help on how to do school when they get back. A lot of kids didn't come back this spring, so we're gonna have the time to show them how to do school. Our literacy blocks are going to incorporate not only reading and writing, but we're also going to incorporate science and social studies, as well as writing and phonemic awareness. Our math blocks are going to allow us for direct instruction, as well as small groups. And that is where the teacher will be allowed to uh, differentiate his or her instruction. We'll always have a daily special, which is PE, art, or music. And of course, you'll see that we're going to incorporate an intervention block along with Project Lead the Way. And Project Lead the Way, our elementary students are going to be working on uh, uh, launch, which is an introduction to computer science at the elementary level. Uh, the next steps are going to be principal conversations about organizing what the school day would look like, teacher conversations about instructional planning, and parent conversation about schedules and the academic interventions that we're going to be providing at the elementary level. So with that, I would like to open it to any questions or concerns that you may have. Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. Where's recess?
Excuse me? Where's recess? Recess is going to be uh, the way it is now. Teachers are going to be uh, taking recess, their kids out to recess. It will not be attached to the actual lunch period. Well, I just didn't see it on the schedule there. That's what had me concerned. Uh, Mike? We're, we're not eliminating recess. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Miller. We're not eliminating recess. So the teacher has a two-hour block, Trustee Murphy, and they've been instructing for about 60, 60, 70 minutes. The teacher is at liberty to take the kids out for 15 minutes. That is at the teacher's discretion. So there's not a set recess time like it used to be, like after lunch. No. Things like that. No. No. That is not the way it is. No. Really. And specials are only 30 minutes now, or is that specials just... Specials have always been 30 minutes. Okay, we'll talk more on recess at another time. Absolutely. <laughs> Any other discussion? President Zuno. Trustee King. Mr. Salinas, Mr. you talked about... Yes, ma'am. ...the two types of students grow. <clears throat> and does this address the student that had the extreme, de you know, deficiency with the loss of learning... Does this, how does this help that student that, you know, should be hundreds of students, as we know, extreme, as your own words, I read it somewhere, either you or Mr. Miller wrote, the extreme uh, def deficiency in our students, learning lost. How, how is this going to address them? I appreciate that question. So again, Thank you. as educators, we're responsible for annual growth. It means that Tony should make this much growth in second grade. If Tony comes into second grade two years behind, he has to also make what we call catch-up growth. The majority of our kids due to COVID, Trustee King, are going to have to make not only annual growth, but catch-up growth. That is why these two-hour literacy blocks are so important. In that block, the teacher can give direct instruction and at the same time pull Tony aside to say, hey, we're going to talk about your catch-up growth. In that sense, the teacher could go back and work on what we call priority standards, target standards, or an area that Tony is struggling in. That is one of the things that teachers have always told us. They'd love to reteach. They don't have the time to reteach. This allows for that to happen during the classroom time, in addition to having them have their special ed services, language development services, speech, OT, PT, because remember, all of that also has to fall into the day. But the core instruction is where all of this has to take place. OK, and then my, I believe my last question. Some of these ideas or concepts, could we have used this previously? So it would have prevented some of the learning loss, some of these ideas and concepts, other than you know changing the time. I know we can't change, but some of these uh, ideas that you have, targeted one-on-one -on -one instruction, you know that kind of thing. Could we have done some of that previously, so we thought you know the learning loss wouldn't be as severe as it is now? With all due respect, I wasn't in this position before. Um, I was an LDP, and I did what I could for the language learners. In this position, I definitely uh, I have a vision for this. She's referring to the to the e-learning time, the 15 months of e-learning. Oh, for e-learning? Well, virtual learning, e I mean, whatever you want to call it, e-learning. Prior to, you know, this whole COVID situation that our children have been, uh, you know. I, I, I suppose, I just, like I said, I wasn't directing elementary prior to COVID, so uh, this is all new. But I, I will say that these are best practices that are going to take place moving forward, and I think we are going to see some results. And can we have a report? Some, an update, not at the end of the semester, somewhere in between, so we, we know it's working. I, I can mean, give that, you, is that reasonable? I can give you baseline data in August. I can give you mid-year data in December, and I can give you end-of-year data in May. Because yeah, we don't want to hear, you know, another 17,000 Fs or another 20,000 Fs. I think I'd just fade away if I hear that kind of information again. We're not I mean, going to be it, dishing it out that. It just me to my heart. <laughs> These no, children we're not give out experience that. that. We won't be giving out Fs, I promise you that. Thank you. Any uh, other discussion? Just really a comment, Mr. President. Trustee Miller. Um, Mr. Salinas, thank you. Uh, thank you for being innovative and trying to, to find a way to make all of this work. I know it, it hasn't been easy, and uh, the task that's before us is, is large. But I, I know um, that uh, along with the the help of our, our teachers and our staff, like we're, we're gonna close that gap. So just thank you, Mr. Slane. We really are, and I, I appreciate it, thank you. But as you can see, I have support. I have my team here, my friends, my colleagues, people who I believe in and believe in me, and they are have a part of it as well. So thank you very much. Appreciate President that. Zuno. Trustee King. The, the concern that Mr. Geek has wanted us to postpone it for tonight, I mean, 
how, how, how important is it for us to pass this tonight and not wait? Uh, the only thing I can say, Trustee King, is that this has been uh, discussed with the union, Mr. Geekus, and the teachers of the exec board. We have discussed this. Um, I, I just I don't know the rationale for postponing it, and I can't speak to that. I, it's just we have a lot of things to plan for, and, and teachers have made it clear that the, the more notice we can give them on big changes like this, that they, they prefer it. Um, so, but we, Tony is correct. We did discuss it as required uh, with the executive board. And it, it is a board decision to set the hours of the day. President Zuno. Trustee King. Out of respect to Mr. Geekus, I make a motion to postpone it to our next meeting. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to postpone this uh, vote. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? I do not have a second motion failed. Mr. Thank President. You. Trustee Miller. Murphy, but. Trustee Murphy, <laughs> sorry. Doesn't matter. I have one more question for the superintendent. How will this affect transportation? Will it have any effect on transportation? So that's, that's actually why we, we made the 15 minutes on both sides. That was in coordination with Director Potts to make sure the routes would still work. So we, we have, from the very beginning, that was one of the considerations. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to revise the elementary school hours for the 2021-2022 school year? making them 15 minutes longer at the beginning of the day and 15 minutes longer at the end of the day. Mr. President. Trustee Miller. Um, I make a motion to, uh, we don't actually have it written out here, do we? Um, to amend the elementary hours as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. Abstain. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Zolno. Yes. And Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Okay, we have four yes, one abstain. Motion passes. Next on the item agenda here is item F. Trustees, the, I am recommending the approval of the Project Lead the Way District Transformation Training Agreement, which will provide training to our elementary schools in the PLTW Computer Science Program. Funded, fund, the amount is $13,000 funded out of our, our PLTW grant. It's coming out of where? Our PLT, we actually have a grant from PLTW to pay for this. Someone wrote it. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the PLTW District Transformation Training Agreement? Mr. President. Trustee Miller. Uh, I make a motion to approve the PLTW District Transformation Training Agreement. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Discussion. Is this the first Trustee type King. Of, thank you. Is this the first type of training we had under this or I don't recall? For, for elementary, we began training before COVID and then COVID hit and then um, so we're picking up the training. It is a state standard that we have to integrate computer science in the elementaries through all grade levels. So this is how we're addressing that state requirement for computer science. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. And trustees all know is yes. Motion passes five four zero against. Next on the agenda is item G, motion to approve the agreements with Interstate Studio. These are three year photography agreements for Lincoln, Franklin, Irving, and Hammond Central. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the agreements with Interstate Studio? President Zono. Trustee Candelaria. I move for the approval of the agreements with Interstate Studio as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If none, Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee 
Miller. Yes. Trustee Zolno, yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item H, approval of 2021 2022 formative assessment. Um, I realize formative is somewhat of an education word. So essentially, we're required by the state to take some snapshots of the kids learning um, a few times a year to see how they're doing and what their areas of strength and their areas of growth are. Um, the program we used last year, Exact Path, uh, did not qualify this year for the state's formative assessment grant. The state does not provide these assessments. They provide funding for you to contract with a company who provides these assessments. And uh, we are recommending the program called iReady which um, aligns well with the iLearn program. So Mr. Salinas, Dr. Ship here, if there's any questions. The first one I will say too, the, the amount is a little bit higher because it does include professional development for the teachers on the new iReady system. We anticipate the the year to year cost moving forward will be more around 100,000 rather than 143. But um, we do need the training for the teachers. Thank you. So do we have a motion to approve the 2021-2022 formative assessment with iReady? Mr. President. Trustee Miller. Uh, I make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 formative assessment. I have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Discussion. Trustee Murphy. Um, Superintendent Miller, so are we going to be doing the training before school starts or after? Tony, you want to take that one? And you know the dates better than I do. So to answer your question, it's going to be after, and let me tell you why. The students are going to take their assessment in August, Trustee Murphy. As soon as the results get back, the teachers will be trained to look at that data and how to implement that data into their instruction. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. President Zuno. Trustee King. Is this for all our teachers or just a certain, every teacher is mandated? Is it mandated or is it optional? The, the, the assessment is mandated, yes. I think she's asking which, isn't this K-8 or is it first through eight? No, it goes up into the secondary grades as well. And we, we do administer even to kindergartners. My daughter took the exact path this year for, as formative assessment. So K through 10, I'm sorry. The juniors and seniors don't have to take it because they're past the state um, assessment at that point. President Zuno. Yes, Trustee. Thank you. So we're, we are assessing our children, correct? Our students. So, um, yes. So in a, it's not like a test because, you know, so the kids won't be free, you know, they don't, you know, they, we are just assessing them. <laughs> Can, so the parents, are they aware of what's happening? Because too often, they don't know. I mean, they're just told, you know, da 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 da. I mean, the, the parents need to know exactly what is happening to their children. Thank you. I'm sorry. So, um, Trustee King, the goal is with this new assessment that the parents as well as uh, students and staff will understand the expectations of why they're taking okay. this. Um, again, we take it three times a year. The goal is to look at uh, where our students are with the standards and where they lack skills. And in this assessment is a piece built in where teachers can assign uh, those skill gaps um, courses for those students to complete. And so when they take it again, our goal is to see growth. Um, one of those things when we look at our Indiana state assessments, not only do our students need to pass the assessments, but they also have to show growth. And that means growth from our bottom students that have not passed, the students that have passed, and the students that are almost at that tier of passing. So this assessment will also give us information for our teachers to know where to specifically target in those areas as they teach the current standards, as well as it can be a predictor that we can know where our students will perform on the state assessments. Thank you. Thank you for that. That, <clears throat> excuse me, that hope that hopefully will get us in the right direction because my whole thing from serving on this board is all about academics and that's why I that's I guess I get a little more emotional than others because how these children have 
fared during this COVID is uh, heartbreaking to me. And uh, I, I'm just hoping that, you know, we, not only this, but there will be other programs will be coming forth telling us how you're going to address this severe, I mean, we, we, tend, I mean we, we just take it too lightly for me. I mean, severe deficiency during this pandemic for these children, hundreds of them, thousands of them. And, and how I just want to make sure we're on top of it. And, and I don't want to get a report six months later, as we normally do, that it didn't work. All of this money we spent, I mean, this has been the norm for me since I've been on this board and prior to the board. We pay for this kind of stuff. Mr. President? <laughs> Rusty Miller. I, I call for the vote. Like we're getting off topic again. A point of order, Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. I have a follow-up question, so I... Oh, okay. she gets to talk and I don't. Wow. I'm not making a statement. I have a question. It's, it's, I, it's not a matter of what is... My comments to me are just as valuable and should be. I mean, it's shameless way you two just act like two bullies on each end. You know, I can't get the second or third sentence Point of order. And here, here we go. Point please, of order. Please bring Point the of order. back to order, please. I'm not out of order. I'm not out of order. Please bring this meeting back to order. Right, well, I am not out of order. Dr. Ship, I got oh. like two bookends on me. During Trustee Murphy, do you have a question? Yes, for Dr. Ship. So you talked about assigning skill growth. So is that something that, um, so they take the test, they're assessed, and that the teachers can assign something to them. So is that online or is that something done in the classroom? That is something uh, that is online. It's called Standards Mastery. Okay. And so that is part of when these students complete the assessments, it will be an expectation that the teachers receive that information, but also dissect it of where, what it means, because you can have certain students kind of cluster at certain skill, skill levels. And so a teacher can assign a student, it's like, uh, it could take maybe 10 minutes, uh, a little activity, and then they're assessed on that one skill to see have they learned that skill and how they're performing to know that that's where the reteaching comes from. So a teacher can use that. In addition to, the teacher can also pull out their tricks of how to uh, remediate a student or have interventions to make sure that gap is closed. So it's not like we're going to take this, uh, uh, the students will take this uh, assessment and we just say, okay, here's where our students fall, but we have to have follow-up and accountability. And the way we have that follow-up and accountability is that it has a piece built in there to help a teacher get started to uh, bridge that gap for that student, but also that teacher can add those additional uh, activities to close that gap so when the student takes the assessment again, we want to see that that gap has been closed uh, with that student. We don't want it to get bigger. We want it to close, possibly get at <clears throat> grade level. So, so it's already built into the program. Well, hold, hold, hold up, hold up. So I, I, I think I need to be real clear about it. They're giving us six months of those learning pathways for free. This contract is for the testing. And if we find out that there is significant teacher usage and that we see that, then we can look at subscribing to the pathways, but the pathways are not included. That was one of the reasons we went with exact path last time though, is because that was part of the price. And it could be to COVID, whatever reason, but our data showed that it was hardly used in the district at, at all, those follow-up pathways after the assessments. So Dr. Ship and I agree that whatever we move forward with, there has to be an accountability system at the building, um, whether it's data review meetings or, or where this is monitored and tracked and so we have accountability. But the, the pathways are not actually part of this contract. They're giving us six months to see if we think it's, it's worthwhile and shows, shows an investment. One more follow-up question, sorry. So um, these activities, can these also be done? So if a child has significant gaps, can this, because we get send the Chromebooks home with them, can this also be done at home or is this mainly for in the classroom? It could be also assigned to the students to have the Chromebook. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, we have a motion, a second. We've had discussion. Someone like to, uh, let, no, we've got that already. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Zolno. Yes. Motion passes 5-0.
Item I, approval of agreement between Healthy Choice Vending and Eggers Middle School. Not much to say here. It's just a commission-based model for vending. President Zuno. Do I have a motion to approve the agreement with Healthy Choice Vending at Eggers? President Zuno. Trustee King. I make a motion to approve the agreement between Healthy Choice Vendors and Eggers. Thank second. you. Do we have a second? We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? If none, Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Candelaria? Yes. Trustee King? Yes. Trustee Mil Murphy? Yes. And Trustee Zolno's yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item J, approval of contract with SAVVS Learning Company, the SIOP model. Yes, uh, trustees, this is for professional development for up to 30 of our language development staff to uh, have best practice in working with our language development students, or English language learners. Do I have a motion to approve? It's 15000 paid for out of the SR2 grant. Sorry, yeah, no Superintendent problem. Miller. Um, Mr. President. Trustee Miller. I make a motion uh, to approve the contract with SAVVS Learning Company SIOP model. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Discussion. Trustee it's King. SIOP, does that stand for anything or is this just a trademark? Or is it? Tony, I don't have the acronym memorized. I know you know this like the back of your hand. It stands for Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. And so what it, Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol, S-I-O-P. It's referred to as SIOP. Um, and I have um, resources or links that I can send to you, uh, Mrs. King, about, about that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. And Trustee Zonos, yes. Motion passes 5 0. Oh, one of my favorite ones approval of extracurricular account dormant fund transfer requests. <laughs> uh, similar to two weeks ago, trustees, we are trying to uh, prune through our extracurricular accounts and accounts that have not had activity in years and years. We are requesting uh, permission to move those into active accounts. Do I have a motion to approve the extracurricular account dormant fund transfer request? President Zeno. Trustee Candelaria. I move for the approval of extracurricular account dormant fund transfer request as presented. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just one, President Zeno. Trustee King. Mr. Miller, I had asked at the previous meeting when we, when we, when these appear on the agenda that we do have a total, <laughs> and uh, for, for for the next one coming up, could we please, uh, for the record, for the <clears throat> record purposes, for the folks to know how much money we're talking? I mean, is that so hard? I, I will. Um, I'll edit the the board doc to reflect the totals. That's no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? A roll call vote. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Zolnos. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on to the approval of University of Notre Dame English as a new language program. Trustees, this is another one of those uh, ones where we have to approve a program for one of the parochial schools in our area. <coughs> it's funded through their Title III disbursement. In this case, it's St. Kaz, and they are requesting uh, $6,000 to fund this professional development. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the University of Notre Dame English as a new language program? Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. I move that we approve the University of Notre Dame English as a new language program as presented. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Discussion. Do we have a program like this for, for School City Hammond? For our English as a new language program? <coughs> I, I, I have not researched the Notre Dame program. Um, 
I know we have quite a few programs for our, our teachers that work with our ENL students. Tony, Tony do, you, do you want to comment at all? I know you have familiarity. We don't have a program that's comparable to this program. Trustee King, um, St. Cas has the highest parochial English language learner um, population outside of the school city of Hammond, and they're trying to just get um, professional development for their teachers. And so these are funds that we as the public entity have to give to them, but a, a program that's comparable to that we don't have. Here we want mainly focus on the SIOP professional development series. So the SIOP is better than that. <laughs> okay. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a trick question. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Candelaria. Yes. Trustee King. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Zolmos. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Item number seven, the calendar, our upcoming board meetings. Tuesday, July 6th, we have an executive session at 5.30. And following that, at 6 p.m., was our school board meeting here at the Administration Center. And the one after that would be Tuesday, July 20th, again, 6 p.m. at the Administration Center. <clears throat> that takes us to public expression, second period. Public expression, second period, uh, general matters. First community member is going to be Nancy Cobb. Nancy Cobb. I live here in Hammond. And just sitting here listening to all the different things that have come up, like under new business, a renaming of Morton High School Auditorium. Time was not taken to rename Hammond High. You said there were surveys, but I will say the survey never came to our community where the school is being built at. <clears throat> okay, I'm making statements. Uh, D, approval of the revision to administration handbook, summer school compensation. i like to know who are the what committee revised this revision to administration handbook? You know, uh, is there a committee? Is it the board? Who is the one that's uh, revising these things or for the work that you are, you have to approve? Uh, another thing I've noticed that the trustees are very disrespectful to each other. You are supposed to be professional, and you're not acting professional when you uh, do the different things you say to each other. One thing you could do as a professional, even if you do not want uh, one of your members to, you can just second her motion and vote it down. That would be, that would be the right thing to do, and it would be the more professional thing to do instead of not ever giving a second to the motion. Uh, I, I just think that this board needs to kind of get yourself together. Like I said, you're very disrespectful to each other and it's, it's blatant. Everybody knows that uh, you're doing these things because it's time and time again. So therefore, my suggestion to you is to second our motion and vote it down. Thank you. Thank you. Next community, community member is going to be Leslie Campbell. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Campbell. Um, I have been working for the school city of Hammond for almost 30 years, and I was at Gavitt. Um, I feel at times that we are treated as second-class citizens. We have to make a living just like everyone else do. Um, $1,500 
after you tax this, we won't get anything, okay? And I personally, I'm speaking for everyone, I have came to work every day during this pandemic, didn't have a choice to stay at home because I had um, a health issue like the teachers were able to um, back when the kids came back. And I'm asthmatic, so I was, you know, prone to the, you know, the virus as anybody else. And I worked every single day from August. And when the kids came back, I worked and I ran that safe zone at Gavin. And I'm appalled. I'm appalled right now. I am. I can start crying because I work hard for, for, for this school. I do. I have worked hard. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hammond to other school districts. Remember you said uh, other school districts, they have given their, um, support staff. yeah, their support staff any money, but we are giving them $1,500. My question is, we as, no, not my question, it's not a question, other than why are we comparing Hammond to other school districts? Are we comparing them to Munster? Are we comparing them to East Chicago, uh, whatever is close to us, are we comparing them to them in the sense that we all have the same amount of money? Let's look at Hammond as Hammond and not as uh, another school district. Thank you. Thank you. Now I will pass it over to Superintendent Miller for any online questions. There are none. Comments. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to reports from the superintendent. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, <clears throat> I would like to announce that the Virtual Academic Academy is now accepting applications. This is for students that may have a medical reason that they may not be able to attend in person in the upcoming fall or that they had a great de degree of success uh, with e-learning over the past year. It is a competitive application process at this point, um, but please visit our website if that sounds like something you are interested in doing. Um, I want to continue to mention, uh, Director Clarehan as well mentioned that we have uh, the Department of Food and Nutrition has free grab-and-go meals for anyone under 18 years old on Mondays and Wednesdays from now into July 30th. I'm gonna, it's not every school, I'm gonna read them off. Edison, Irving, Franklin, O'Bannon, Harding, and Morton Elementary from 10.30 to noon uh, are the pickup locations. I'll say those again. Edison, Irving, Franklin, O'Bannon, Harding, Morton L from 10.30 to noon on Monday and Wednesday to pick up meals. And again, you don't have to be part of School City Hammond. Any child under 18, uh, we can provide meals for. School City Hammond is hiring. We are having a job fair on Friday, June 25th from 9 to 3, right in this room right here. Open positions include aides, substitute teachers, health care service workers, custodians, food service workers, and transportation workers. Please come with your resume and be ready to interview on site. I also want to say that uh, myself, along with the trustees, were able to participate in the four graduation ceremonies over the past week. And it was just so affirming to see uh, all the young kids' smiles and, and just how excited they were to be graduating and moving on to the next step. Hearing from our Val Victorians and salutatorians, their, their challenging words for their class and for everyone in attendance. I mean, that's, that's why we we're in this business, is, is to prepare kids for the next step, to be successful at whatever that is. Um, so congratulations again to all of our graduates of the class of 2021. We are very proud of you, and, and don't be a stranger. Come on back, hopefully come back and uh, fill a role in School City Hammond. We've got a lot of roles, not just teachers. We, we've got IT, we've got transportation, we've got a lot of different things people can do in the School City, and we'd love you to be a part of it. Um, as for regards to just a few of the comments, when, when uh, an item is, is prepared for the board that goes through my office, um, 
it is uh, such as a change to the administrative handbook. The superintendent is the one who would look and see, is this a fair thing to recommend to the board or not? Um, if, in my opinion, if an employee works a full day, whether they're an administrator or they're, um, they uh, have a different role in the school city of Hammond, they should be paid a full day's wage. And the previous language said they only would get paid two-thirds a day wage because back when that was written, we didn't have a full day of summer school. We only had a morning session for summer school. But now we have summer school with a morning session and an afternoon session. So they're working a full day. That's, that's where the motivation came, came from that. And, and in regards to other school districts, I agree there's a balance of, well, I will say this. To me, there, there should be a balance of, of examining what your peers are doing because that's certainly something we do with best practice. We, we try to say, hey, what's being successful for other, other school districts? So there is a balance between saying, we're going to strike out on our own um, because we are the largest district in Lake County or what is working for other school districts. And, and, and that is just, I think that's being responsible, honestly, is to examine what everybody else is doing and making sure what we're doing is in accordance with federal guidelines. This is federal money with the stipends. It is not up 100% to School City of Hammond. We have to do things that are uh, within, within the grant language. So I, I hear you, I hear what you're saying in that, hey, you know, primarily you should just be concerned about what's right for Hammond, but we, we do consider all factors and uh, we do consider what's being successful for other districts like ours, both locally and across the state. Um, but I think that's, that's all I will say on that. And that concludes my reports. Oh, I'm sorry, Ken gave me a note. We are in the process of collecting Chromebooks. We really need them back. We really don't want to invoice anyone for a Chromebook. So we have the following days and times where you can drop off the, the Chromebook at the back of the Career Center. That's door E. So that's tomorrow anytime from 7 to 3. Thursday from 7 to 7. So we have some night hours there on Thursday, 7 to 7. But Friday we will be closed. So again, if you haven't dropped off your laptop and you're not a high school student, we really need them back. Or if you're a graduating senior, of course, we need your device back. Um, that's at the technology department, the back of the career center door E. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Miller. Reports from the board. President uh, Zuno. Trustee King. I would like to ask Mr. Miller a couple of questions. This is Regarding. reports, this is not question and answer. I've done it before. Pardon? You. I said this is not a question and answer session. Do you have a report? Mr. President, I just wish you would be consistent. When I, when I made those requests pre in previous meetings, you, al you allowed that because I asked you for your permission to ask Mr. Miller some questions based on the report he gave today. But that's Again, this <coughs> is supposed to be reports from the board. Okay. Well, reports from me. I have a, uh, reports from me. I uh, attended all four graduations and um, high school graduations, and as Dr. Uh, Mr. Miller indicated, they were very emotional. I would encourage you to, I believe all of the uh, graduations are still on the website, Mr. Miller? Are they still on? They'll, they'll be on the YouTube forever, YouTube. really. I'm sorry for asking a question, but I didn't know, so I had to. <laughs> I would encourage each of you to uh, listen to the salutatorians uh, addresses, they were full with information and uh, of, of how, and some of how they were actually treated. But you need to see how, what these children went through to get where they are. Our salutatorians and our valedictorians, I thought that was very commendable on them. Um, there will be a Juneteenth celebration this Saturday at uh, Martin Luther King Park. Uh, I will be participating giving part of the history and why we should vote. I would encourage you all to come from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The program starts at noon. I attended the Maywood Elementary School reverse parade, had a ton of fun, it was a Hawaiian theme. So we were out there in our grass skirts and all, and then the children did a great job, and so did the teachers. And they certainly enjoyed that. I attended the retirement party for our uh, retirees uh, we had a ball. <laughs> Some of the comments uh, were great, and uh, I just enjoyed 
seeing them getting their attributes as they should, as putting so many years uh, into the school district and trying to make it a better place for all of our children. And um, hopefully at our next meeting, we'll get an update on the, uh, the BRICS regarding Hammond High School, the uh, HEF BRIC program. I've been trying to get information on that, not received any information on that. And uh, our ribbon cutting is July 22nd for the new school. I don't know what the program is, and hopefully at some point, Mr. Miller will give us an update of the program and how it works and the sale of the, uh, the property and the furniture at Hammond High, when, when will it start? So I don't have those answers to the stakeholders, and hopefully at some point we will. Thank you. Thank you for your report, Trustee King. Anyone else? Mr. President. Trustee Murphy. I was able to attend two of the graduations. Um, one of the things that I was extremely happy about was the quality of the diplomas that were issued. Numerous academic honor diplomas. Um, several of our students also got dual honor diplomas, technical as well as academic honors. So our students, um, some of them are doing extremely well out there and kudos to the teachers that pushed them to strive that high. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. President. Trustee Miller. I, I really just have a comment. Again, I would just like to uh, congratulate the class of 2021. Thank you. I would just like to thank everyone who came to the meeting tonight and also thank everyone who are at home watching on their uh, Facebook. Thank you again, and we'll see you in July. Have a safe fourth.